lawmakers on Capitol Hill are once again facing a deadline to avert a government shutdown this Friday. Over the weekend, House Speaker Mike Johnson unveiled a two-step proposal that would extend some funding through January 19th and the rest until February 2nd. But some House Republicans are pushing back on that approach. President Biden says he has not made a decision on whether to veto the bill. Nancy Cordes and Scott McFarlane join us now. Nancy is CBS News Chief White House Correspondent, and Scott is a CBS News Congressional Correspondent. Scott, I want to start with you. How is Speaker Johnson trying to get this proposal over the finish line, and ultimately, will he need Democrats to do it? Oh, this proposal is like the legislative version of that house down the street that gives out raisins on Halloween instead of candy. The kids don't want it. The kids aren't enthused about it. But eventually, when everything else is gone, the kids might eat it. There have been Democrats who've called this proposal bizarre and reckless, but they haven't called it dead. It is clean. There are no major cuts to any programs. There's no controversial policies added. But it's got this strange dynamic, Nicole, where it has one third of the government funded through January, the other two thirds, including the Pentagon, through February. And that has struck people as weird or untenable. But it's become increasingly clear as the evening begins here. It's going to need to be a bipartisan group. There are not the sufficient Republican votes to do this alone. One of them is Chip Roy of Texas on the House Rules Committee, who may put opposition toward even the rule passing, who spoke earlier today. Take a listen. For the same reasons that, you know, I opposed the CR on October 1st, I opposed a CR that uh, the current speaker, Speaker Johnson, is putting forward because it continues to perpetuate the very system my, my constituents sent me here to oppose. So now there's the question of whether the rule even passes. Will Republicans vote to get this thing to a floor debate tomorrow? I know that's some inside baseball, but it's pretty important because if it does not, Speaker Johnson needs not only a majority, he would need two of every three members of the House to get this thing passed. Anything is possible over the next 24 hours. Well, we'll try to keep that optimism, Scott. Meantime, President Biden had this to say when asked about a possible shutdown. With regard to a potential shutdown, I understand that uh, the new Speaker of the House has a proposal. It's being negotiated with the minority leader of the House and Senator Schumer and, uh, and uh, the uh, Republican leader are also talking about it. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I'm not going to make a judgment what I'd veto, what I'd sign. But let's wait and see what they come up with. So, Nancy, the White House has called this proposal a recipe for chaos and unserious. Why wouldn't the president potentially veto it? Well, reading between the lines, Nicole, of what White House officials were saying today, it appears that they're still trying to negotiate with leaders in the House and Senate, trying to figure out some way to keep the lights on, keep the government funded, at least in the short term, and in a perfect world, also provide new funding for Israel and Ukraine. They haven't given up on that possibility yet, and so they aren't willing to wield that veto threat yet. But uh, make no mistake, if we get to later in the week and those negotiations don't bear fruit, it is entirely possible at that point that the president will come to a decision about how he feels and issue a veto threat. I asked the national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, today about the possibility of a shutdown when you've got uh, the White House engaged in conflicts now, both in Israel and in Ukraine. He said it would be devastating for the military in particular if you've got members of the military who aren't getting their full paychecks and who are living with great uncertainty, even as they are assisting in these war zones. The uh, U.S. is now focused on two wars, one in the Middle East, one in Ukraine. What would it mean for this government, and in particular uh, foreign policy and the military, if there were to be a government shutdown come Friday night? This would be a devastating blow, first of all, to our service members at a very human level, because it would have an impact on uh, the ability of our troops to and their families to get all of the benefits and services that they deserve for the service that they are performing for our country. So this is going to be something that the White House is watching very closely this week, Nicole, even as the president heads to California to meet with the Chinese president. Yeah, very busy week ahead. Scott, so switching gears a bit, the Supreme Court just announced it will institute a new ethics code after several justices came under scrutiny for accepting lavish trips and gifts. What reaction are you hearing on the Hill, especially from those on the Senate Judiciary Committee who had called for reform? I've heard the phrase a good start a lot. 
from Democrats who have been pressuring the Supreme Court to do just this. They like that there's a codified version of these policies and best practices to avoid the justices running afoul of conflicts of interest, of running afoul of things that look bad optically or in practical senses for the Supreme Court. But there's no enforcement, according to some of the leading Senate Democrats. If these best practices, if these procedures, if this code is violated, well, what's the stick? And ultimately, they're saying there isn't one there. So I would expect a continued push from Senate Democrats to pass some of these proposed new laws, which would not only put a code of conduct in place, but put an enforcement mechanism with a panel of other judges to determine what the punishment or penalties will be for violations. And Nancy, turning to some other developments involving the White House, a Secret Service agent on Naomi Biden's detail fired a weapon during a car break-in. What more do we know about this incident? Nicole, this took place uh, late on Sunday night. The president's granddaughter, Naomi Biden, lives in Georgetown, a couple of miles away from the White House where we're standing right now. Uh, she was not outside when this happened, but apparently her security detail spotted uh, a few individuals trying to break the window of an unmarked Secret Service vehicle. There was some kind of encounter. Uh, one of the officers discharged their weapon, and the suspects uh, fled the scene in a red sedan. And the incident is now being investigated. It doesn't appear anyone was hurt, but uh, any time a Secret Service officer discharges their weapon, there has to be an investigation. So that's what's taking place right now, um, involving both the D.C. police and the Secret Service. And it all takes place amid a broader backdrop of increased crime here in Washington, D.C. Car thefts, carjackings are up by about 100 percent since last year. Violent crime is way up as well. And there's no indication at this point that the suspects even realized that they were breaking into a Secret Service vehicle. All right. Nancy Cordes and Scott McFarland, good to see you as always.